The sooner you subscribe, the sooner I won't have to make these goddamn annoying intro videos. It's on you. Welcome back to PokerNews.com and our coverage of EPT Malta. I am here with Charlie Carroll. Did I say it right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Brits, accents. Uh, you just won a W Coop. Congratulations. Yeah, one Sunday Million. You've won a few EPTs. When you're on the road at an EPT, do you try to just focus on the live play or do you just go home and also play online as well? Um, well, a bunch of the places you can't play online, so that's kind of not a thing. Uh, it generally will depend on uh, judgment at the time on which will be higher EV. So generally, if there's like a high roller on, you won't play online because you have a lot higher EV on that. But if it's the choice between playing a Sunday online and then playing like a 2K or something, then you'll probably take the Sunday. So what did you do yesterday? Yesterday was a Sunday. What did you decide to do? Uh, the main was yesterday. Yeah, I, I forgot to. I was meant to play the Supersonic on my phone, but I forgot, which was just heartbreaking, you know. So you do sometimes play both at the same time? Yeah, kind of. Sometimes. If you're, it's, it's like early enough in a level or in a tournament where it's like low blinds, maybe pop out the laptop or the phone. Yeah, it's, it's like one of those things where if you're the kind of person that can concentrate on the beginning of a tournament, just like pre-anti-structure, not much happening, people just like, I'll play one hand an hour kind of thing, then you don't need to play on your phone at the same time. But if you're the kind of person that gets distracted, it's probably in your best interest to like, shoot up a hyper turbo or something in the background. What kind of person are you? Uh, varies, you know, depending on how much I've slept. All right. So have you been having fun here in Malta? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, EPTs are just sick. I can't imagine not having fun traveling and playing a game for a living, you know? You're, so speech play has been a very popular topic recently. You chat a lot, you're a friendly guy at the table. Yeah. Do you think that gives you an edge in live poker? Uh, I would love to be able to say no so people can you know, carry on speaking, but honestly, it's one of the, I think, most unexplored and most exploitable parts of poker. And I think not 100% sure, but I think that might be the direction of where poker, live poker especially, obviously live poker starts going. But you can't use chat box in online because it's getting to the point now where people are playing such similar strategies in the terms of theory of the game that you have to find new areas to explore to get the edge. You know? Do you think there should be more or less regulation on speech play? Um, I guess it's probably situational to which casino you're in. If I assume in the back of everyone's head when you mentioned this will be like the Walker Soup thing that's happened. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, that was just like so many things about what happened at the WSOP to Walker Soup make me sick to my stomach. And I think he was just treated so unfairly. And even though people were saying it was in the best interest of the game, apart, like aside, putting aside how bad people were acting, like as human beings, in they use this like kind of pseudo rationalization to punish him that it wasn't in the best interest of the game while he's tanking. But I mean, I couldn't wait when the next episode of the WSCP was going to come out. I was like checking every day. I've never done that. Like last year, I turned off the final table because it was so boring. So they're just like, mm, I'll stay silent for eight hours. And then, mm, yeah, somebody won eight million. Mm, I would celebrate though. <laughs> And that was it. Like, Poker robots. Yeah, it was. It was just, and this year, like, Will just made it great. And I think that he does it extremely well. I think that it's not even unfair because he's giving away a bunch of information himself. Uh, and it's just like so entertaining. I can't see any reason why the regulations wouldn't be more lenient towards people that are going to like promote poker in the long run. Yeah. And I think the problem was there are a lot of rulings that are like one player per hand, which had nothing to do with speech, but they just didn't have actual speech rules. So they're sort of citing different rules to accommodate the yeah, situation. I, I mean, like, I can't remember, was it Jack Apple that said that? He just needs like a slap on the wrist and told no. Like, you know, I was so shocked. Director, and then they brought Jack in and he oh, okay. Rolling. Yeah, no, it's, that was that. I, I don't even want to speak that. That's, yeah, yeah. that's out. <laughs> All right, so maybe we'll see charlie at the final table of this 10k high roller doing some speech play making it interesting for all you live viewers out there only way you can see it and find out is by checking back pokernews.com i turned 50 dollars into millions of dollars playing poker live and online you can find out how i did it on my website charliecarroll.com where i'm teaching other people to do the same you can find my Cash Game Masterclass, where I restructure the way that people think about poker completely instead of telling you what to think. 
You can find my Mindset Masterclass where I teach people about meditation, about tilt control, bankroll management, and all the good, important, juicy things. And you can find my full archive of footage of the bankroll challenge where I turned $50 into $10,000 and showing you exactly how I did it, streaming every single hand along the way.